46 is brought to you by Dr. George Leakes, Harum's optometrist since 1990, offering full-spectrum eye care for children and adults. Call today, 727-8300. News is also brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. Tonight on News 46, World War II photographs are released to the public. A local man is arrested for solicitation, and a new gaming experience is happening in Town Square. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening, it's Monday, January 30th, 2017. I'm Deanne O'Donnell for News 46. Well, the Ebert flu family has been living with a big secret for a long time. They can now tell the world about declassified photos that Frank Ebert flu's father took during World War II. They depict before and after bombings in England, France, and Germany. You can find them online and also purchase a copy. We caught up with Carol and Frank Ebert flu this morning at their home here in Pahrump. Oh, my dad was in World War II, and when he was into the service, he was into the OSS end of the service. What's the OSS? Uh, the OSS is the CIA today, which in turn would put him under cover, which in turn, I believe, uh, Roosevelt is the one that actually created the OSS in 1942. And so he served during World War II, right? Yes, he did. He served. And so he was a photographer? He was a photographer. You found out that some artwork that he has is uh, priceless. How did you find that out? Well, I always was aware of it as I was growing up, but uh, and my dad had passed away back in 1982. I was the only boy of the family, so mom passed the stuff on to me, and he was the one that was strapped to the wing of the airplane, and always told us that he was strapped to a wing of an airplane. And So he told you he was strapped to a wing of an airplane, and he was taking Aerial pictures? photos. Aerial photos. I have all of the documentation where he was in the OSS and where he was transferred to Paris, London, yeah. and wound up in Germany. But that was confirmed by Bob Reed mm -hmm. with Reed Art and Imaging, who handles uh, the making of the photos. And Bob was also in World War II, and he is a photography buff. And um, you guys looked everywhere for somebody who knew what oh, they were yeah. looking at when you were trying to get these uh, prints laid out and developed. Laid out and developed, priced. Mm -hmm. Well, we've talked with uh, um, Christie's of London, Christie's of New York, and end up in San Francisco, and they still couldn't tell us the value of the collection of photos. Is there a value now? No, still not. Still no value. They just say they're priceless. They're so priceless. We've, they're under lock and key in a bank. Uh, the pictures that we have are pictures of all over France, all over London. You have the London Tower, you have the Eiffel Tower, Germany. Germany. And this is during the time that the war is actually going on. So you have pictures of the actual bombing, but you have pictures of intact buildings that they didn't really have very much archived for this, right? I would say that they wouldn't. They were uh, taken, some of them were befores and some of them were afters. And which in turn, that's what, you know, Hitler had done, Hitler's army had done to London, to France. Mm -hmm. And my dad happened to be there at that particular time. Frank said his dad was actually tied to the wing of the plane taking those photographs. We'll have more with the Ebert Flues on tomorrow night's broadcast. President Donald Trump signed an executive order Friday night to keep refugees from entering the country for 120 days and immigrants from seven predominantly Muslim nations out for three months. The countries affected are Iran, Iraq, Syria, Sudan, Libya, Yemen, and Somalia. Apparently, the order was never ran by officials at the Justice Department, and Homeland Security officials say they weren't given much guidance about how the order would be implemented or enforced. The ban snared green card holders and people with valid 
visas alike. Some travelers who were in the air when Trump signed the order weren't able to enter the country when they landed. Some were detained. Others were sent back to where they flew in from. Lawsuits began to fly, and by Saturday night, a federal judge had temporarily and partially blocked Trump's orders. Thousands of protesters have showed up at airports across the country to demonstrate. Vocal crowds against the order gathered outside the White House. A local man has been arrested for allegedly soliciting a minor for sex. Sheriff's Office has 48-year-old Robert Michael Pearson in custody for engaging in soliciting for prostitution with a minor and habitual criminal. On January 29, 2017, Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies were dispatched to an address on Tanya Drive in reference to a report of an adult male soliciting a minor female for prostitution. Upon arrival, deputies made contact with a juvenile female victim who stated that she was solicited for sex by Robert Pearson. The juvenile stated that Pearson was a friend of a family member and that Pearson had approached her and asked her to have sex with him. The juvenile victim stated Pearson offered her $1,000 if she would agree to have sex with him, to which she declined. The victim also stated that after she declined Pearson's offer of sex for money, Pearson then asked her if she knew someone 16 to 18 years of age that would have sex with him. The victim then stated that Pearson said that he would pay $5,000 to the 16 to 18 year old if she could find someone who would agree to have sex with him for money. The juvenile stated that she declined all offers of sex for money or assisting Pearson in solicitation. According to police, Robert Pearson was convicted in California in 1992 for willful child cruelty resulting in injury or death, which is a felony, and he was also arrested in Nevada for sexual assault with a child under 14 years of age and pled guilty to the charge of abuse, neglect, and endangerment of a child with substantial mental harm, which is also a felony. Pearson was located and was arrested and transported to the Nye County Detention Center. This is Caitlin Boyer reporting for News 46. Thanks, Caitlin. When we return, another sex crime arrest and a heroic cop saves an elderly woman.